While we get the engine ready for its first crank, I'd like to take a minute to reflect on how we got here. This engine build started one year and six months ago with the dream of bringing to life the 40 valve V10 that Ford only showed us in prototypes. It all started with sourcing Cobra heads that were cut up and welded back together to fit the V10 block. We encountered hurdles like warping, which caused the cam journals to be misaligned. To solve this, we created our own line boring tool to realign the journals. Being a one of a kind engine, it fell on us to fabricate many parts like an intake and cooling system. Our biggest hurdle, however, was getting custom camshafts, which arrived only a month ago. With those, we completed assembling the engine, and let me tell you, Ford is going to regret never producing this engine after they hear the sounds this thing makes. It has been a long but rewarding process, and it goes to show that with hard work and dedication, you can pull off what at first seems impossible. Okay, enough with the talk. Let's get this thing ready to fire. All right, we've got a timing light hooked up. We got no plugs in this thing. Disconnect the injectors. We're just gonna make sure it's firing where we expect it to. And uh, that'll be the last check. So this will be the first time we're cranking it over on the starter too. Okay, ready? Yeah. It's not even no spark. spark. No spark. So we're having issues with we're cranking it from my computer. There's a start button on the software, but we're not getting any cranking signal. So uh, we just recalibrated the throttle position sensor again. So we're gonna try and actually crank it from the ECU, see if we get any signal here. It didn't. And so, as it usually does, the fun started with no crank signal. We tried using the old sensors. We checked air gaps. We even cleaned the mounting surfaces. That was a dead end. We triple checked the engine harness, the ECU pin out, but that was also all fine. But then... Oh, there's no oscilloscope mode. Oh, see, okay, yeah, can we, can we scope this? this. Okay. I can do it, sir. Tell me when. Go. Go. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. It's the green one. All right. Check the spark plugs. The battery, is that... that oh, is we got that. signal, though. We're still troubleshooting these. We, uh, turns out there's a oscilloscope mode on the field tech software, so we, uh, we turned it on. And as you can see, this, the green lines are the crank signal, the orange is cam, and we are getting a uh, crank sensor signal. So we're still not reading RPM, so we're still not really sure what's going on. Um, we're going to keep trying a couple more things with the sensors themselves, but we tried doing it manually with like, uh, we just unplug the sensor and hit it with the wrench and stuff and it does read it so the problem's not oh. the sensor something's going on we're still not getting signal two hours later oh we got crank signal we got crank signal what happened what? oh you the changed, changed the, the tooth. tooth that was it jordan let's, let's 212 they hit so that's pretty that's good. Right, yeah. Let me hit it one more time. Ready? I, now we should be sparking the. It plug, shows right? the. We got spark. We got spark. All right. We got spark. Two hundred RPM, baby. Two hundred. All right. Well, so we figured it out. Turns out we had the tooth count wrong on the trigger wheel. Who knows why that happened, but well, I mean, we we yeah, said we, thirty nine. It's, it's a so forty two. It's got a forty tooth wheel missing one tooth. We interpreted that as on the computer you tell it thirty nine one. It should have been forty missing one tooth. So yeah. that fixed it. We also just checked our base ignition timing and it's spot on at twenty. We locked it at twenty degrees. It's right at twenty. So we're, we're gonna do to it start. tonight. So now we're gonna throw all the spark plugs on, plug in the injectors, and we should be able to crank this. So I was in the toilet pondering life and uh, we, uh, we realized that the ignition we were reading actually the opposite way. So we were reading on the wheel 340 
and we thought that meant, oh, it's 20 degrees south of top dead center, so we're good. But that's actually reading 20 degrees after top dead center. We should be locked at 20 degrees before top dead center. So we're off by 40 degrees. But there's a way to offset it on the software, so we're gonna offset it the 40 degrees we need to and check again. Hopefully that gets us where we need to be. All right, it's ready to fire. We got everything set up. We figured out that the timing, the timing is set exactly where it needs to be. We got the fuel system all put, put back together and hooked up. We just put this exhaust together. We took those mufflers off from my uh, Falcon and it's just to help, help calm it down so we could hear the engine in case something, you know, happens. But uh, I mean, it's are done. you ready? Uh, not really, but this is it. I mean, it's super late. We, we yeah. didn't want to do it late We didn't want to do it at night, but now we can't wait. Now we have to start it because it's time. So we're going to set up a few cameras and we're going to try for the first fire right here. Let's do it. Oh, oh, it's okay. We're close. Ready? Ready again? One more time. Did it blow back through? Yeah, yeah. you have so you much overlap. More. Yeah, you're gonna have to. We got no fuel pressure. Did the pump not kick on? What do you have? If this is a relay, yeah, we have the relay wired. Two forty, so two hundred forty degrees, two thirty-five, two forty. So we're checking the next cylinder. We have having some spark problem. It's backfiring out of the intake and the exhaust. Um, so we put in, we check a number six, which should be seventy-two degrees away from number one. So the the timing is not lining up with what it should be. So that's telling us it's. The way the fuel tech maybe is numbering it is not what we expected. So we gotta go through now and figure out each one where it should be um, and either repin it or somehow change it in the fuel tech. Cylinder three means the third one in the sequence, which is this guy. So it's firing like it's, it th we think when we say three, oh, it's cylinder three. When fuel tech says three, it means the third one in the row, which is this one, five and eight. Five and eight. It's by firing order. Yes, it's by firing order. So we messed up. Or you want to describe? We what interpreted it wrong again, right? With the fuel tech, what they say and what we thought it meant. Before getting into what I was poorly explaining, let's take a look at what wasted spark is and why we are using it. In normal sequential ignition, each spark plug fires once every two revolutions of the crank. For RV10, that means each cylinder fires 72 degrees apart. In a perfect world, this would be the way to control spark, but we live in the real world with real constraints like money and money, and the FT550 doesn't have enough outputs to run sequential ignition and injection for a V10, so we chose to run wasted spark. What is wasted spark? You have two sparks every two revolutions of the crank, twice the normal amount. One spark happens during the exhaust stroke, so it does nothing, hence the name wasted spark. To get wasted spark, you tie two different cylinder spark plugs together. The cylinder's plugs you tie together are the ones firing 360 degrees away from the current cylinder. In RV10, that's one with seven, six with three, and so on. With that out of the way, let's take a look at what we did. Here are the output names from the ECU. We paired the output number with the corresponding cylinder number. One to one, two to two, three to three. You see the pattern. This gives us the firing order on the right, right? Wrong. This is why we were getting backfires out of the intake. Once we understood that the number called out by the ECU pin name meant the firing sequence number, we moved some pins around and got the spark to happen 
when it was supposed to. Nice. We quickly verified each cylinder with the timing light before we tried cranking on it again because we didn't know how many more times the intake could handle another big backfire like that last one. Everything checked out good, so the engine should be ready to come to life now. Or so we thought. Wait, 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 let me smell that exhaust. Smells pretty good. Ready? Seems like maybe too much fuel there. Too much fuel again. I mean, remember, I... I oh, Which the... Like too much fuel. Yeah, I mean, I can smell it from here. Yeah. Uh, it looks like maybe it's adding too much fuel because we could smell it all the way to here. So we turned down the fuel compensation. Uh, we're now going to clear out the cylinders. So we took out the injector relay. We're just gonna open the, uh, the throttle bodies all the way, give it a couple cranks, clean it up, and then start it, or try to start it again. As excited as we were to see flames, we still couldn't get it to fire up. It looked like we were getting too much fuel and weren't able to get the right mixture for it to light off. It was getting late, so we decided to call it for the night. We spent the next day looking over the engine in tune for any possible things we may have missed. What we noticed last time was that the fuel tech was doing some weird compensation stuff. There were so many compensation tables that just are default, you know, when you start the base map. We turned everything off. We're essentially now just relying on the base map that we also kind of just guessed on, uh, but we think this should be close enough to get it started. That's close. Guys, it's finally time to hear this thing. dream we actually have it running now it's it's running well it's idling good it's not making any strange noises we got it up to temp I mean no oil leaks it's been a year and a half we've been through a lot of struggles right we, we a lot of fabrication a lot of development yeah a lot of guess and check but yeah. we finally have something here that actually runs it's making noise it sounds pretty damn good it smells great too mm -hmm. I mean I'm about to pass out but... So this thing is ready to go into the car. We actually have a buyer for the car, the engine in the Continental. So that thing is coming out in the next video. And we're gonna be start making way to getting this thing installed. But it's not a dream anymore, it's a reality. The four valve V10, the 6.8 liter four valve runs. And remember, if you can't buy a four valve V10, build it.
So we've been noticing stuff coming out of the exhaust. We didn't know what it was. My mufflers are the unpacked. It's a, getting unpacked by this fiber. thing. And I've had this thing on my little 302 Falcon that's just got a cam and a stock engine. So it's, these mufflers are definitely not up to the task of that monster. We're gonna need, this is, that's crazy. Dude, it's just taking it apart. We can't run cool views on the V10. 